Now, speaking of five-star bangers, this is interesting. There's a movie called The Long Walk.เป็นยังขอเกณฑ์เราคือกันเราอาจจะให้พ่อสองคนมาพอกันมันเป็นนะนี่เดี๋ยวนี้มีหญิงขายซาบซูนไปบุกมุจักมาแล้วไปทางใ
boy. And then you're seeing his current life as an, not a super old guy, but he's like, I don't know, 60 or something, something like that. And uh, he still is seeing the same spirit that he saw when he was a boy. And you kind of see how that started when he was a boy. For me, uh, I compared it to The Sixth Sense. Uh, that's kind of an obvious comparison. I think if you know the kind of the classic Japanese horror movie, The Tale of Two Sisters, I think it has some elements of that. And if you know the movie The Other from the 70s, it has some elements of that as well. I think to me, this is a this is a classic movie. This is a one of the best movies about haunting in a way one of the best ghost stories i've ever seen this is so intricate and so interesting ultimately it's about i'm not going to get once again get into spoilers but it's about selfishness and making choices and the ramifications of those choices i think that's this this movie is a big part of that like you said as a puzzle piece there are details in this that i think you can go back and re-examine it and re-watch it and really understand how things have changed depending on the way that the the realities are kind of interweaving. I'll leave it at that. There's elements of, there's like this little broken figurine that comes into play. Yeah, my goodness. There's a broken... Finger? Or a, there's, there's a figure. There's a shattered like a, a cabinet door. There's a nail on the side of a, of a cabin. There's a whole bunch of things like that where you can re-examine those details as the movie goes on. And I think that there's a ton still to unravel. And I think I understand it pretty well, but I also don't understand all of it. And I still love it. I think this movie is excellent. Wow. I, I also, losing my father five years ago, this is also a movie that is a very deep film about grief and trauma and how you process it. Some No one ever processes that the, the same way. And The Long Walk has some really interesting just looks without getting too heavy handed. It's... Are you able to move on from, from someone's passing or do you hold on to that for, for a long time? And what happens when you hold on to, to your loved ones a little bit too close? There's, there are moments of that with The Long Walk as well. It's a very layered film. Again, like Bruce, I'm a bit, I was a bit confused with certain, certain things. And what's a great, the greatest thing about this is upon several watches, I'm, I'm going to watch it a couple more times. And I'm sure I'm going to get a couple more puzzle pieces for myself as well. Eric Holmes, your thoughts on The Long Walk? Yeah, this one was really, really good. Um, I, too, was very confused. Like, I'm watching the movie and go, okay, I know what this is. And then someone would say something or something would happen. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm lost. And then I would just kind of go on. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I'm, I'm back on, I'm back on. And th I know what this is. And then something else happens. I'm like, fuck, I'm lost again. <laughs> um, but uh, but like the, uh, the the themes and the tension, the emotion still came through. And I started, I, I felt like I needed to watch it again because I started watching it again last night and I got about a quarter of a way through. And I was like, wow, I'll watch the rest after work before uh, we record today. That didn't happen because I got off work way late. So yeah, this, this movie has a... Um, I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, the stuff well, Bruce you, compared it to. You've seen it more than me. You've seen it at least one and a quarter times. Yeah. During that quarter, were you picking up other things? Did you appreciate yeah. it? Did, okay. Yeah, yeah. It started, um, I, I guess one of, the, one of the things that threw me off was the futuristic element. Because he's got that he's got that thing on his arm. If you've ever seen About Time, it's real similar to that. Right. Um, I, I couldn't quite put my finger on why why that was a choice but this is one of those type of movies that goes in weird places so i feel like i'm missing something there like the 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 futuristic and why set it in the future and then go back to the past and then there was another character that i was like oh those two characters are linked and then the thing happens I'm like oh shit maybe not <laughs> <laughs> but uh it, actually oddly enough it feels a lot like primer and this is not at all, like this has time travel elements, but this is not at all like Primer. But it has that thing where like when you watch Primer, I'm um, just going with it because I know the characters understand what's going on, even though I'm kind of lost. And then you can go back to it. And the more you watch it, you're like, oh, OK. Oh, I, I OK. I see what they're doing there. I think this movie has a lot of that. And even the stuff that uh, didn't go over my head was was like a lot of the emotional stuff. A bunch, oh, there's one scene at the end that <laughs> was really messed up. <laughs> Yes. But uh, the, this this has this movie has like you know it, it's kind of like one of those things like if this came out in December it probably would have uh, been a part of one of those uh, that that award show that only seems to award movies that come out in December. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this person's name, Yana Wuthi Chanta Lungsi. He's a lead actor. Nailed it. <laughs> oh, nailed it. 
he I, I was saying to Bruce on an, on our message on on Facebook, he has more presence than most actors I see today. There, when he's vaping and he's giving that dead-eyed look at, at the authorities or just l- reflecting on his past, he's just wow. There's sometimes it, it's just it just takes a person to actually light up the screen. Did you guys like him as as a lead actor as well? Yes, Eric. Yeah, I actually I, I just saw something like if if you like Parasite, this has a lot of parallels to that. Where like Parasite's the story, you know, the it, it is much of a main story that you can pick with parasite but it's got so many little details and in and outs and subplots and stuff going in there oh sorry i I just derailed this but uh, no no i i think that's true also if you like nolan if you like like you said if you like primer if you like those movies where see the difference to me is that like some of those movies are so dense that you can't get the basic idea of the story I feel like this is one of those movies where you get the basic idea of the story, but you know there's more to unravel. And yeah. you know that if you got in there and actually mapped out what was happening, it's going to even enrich it more. And to me, that's when it's working on both elements. It's giving you that puzzle-solving element that, that some people really love in movies, and I think it can be really fun. But it's also giving you a basic story that you can also just follow. So yeah. I, I pre- it's got both those things, which I really yeah. appreciate. It, yeah, if you like picking movies apart, the, I mean, this is right up your alley. Kind of like Bruce said, this is almost like Tenet. <laughs> it's yeah, almost, almost like Tenet. Tenet. <laughs> almost. If Tenet had a story above it that was good. <laughs> Very good. Eric Holmes, great callback from almost two years ago with Tenet, or a year and a half ago. Very, very good callback. Again, if you're, again, Eric Holmes really enjoyed Tenet, and Bruce Perky, not so much regarding Tenet. But at least all three of us really enjoyed, if not loved, The Long Walk. For me, I'm giving it five stars. Bruce Perky, throw down your ratings. Five stars. Five stars. Eric Holmes, what you got? Yeah, same. Um, wow. Again, I, again like I, I, I didn't fully get it the first time but that uh, much like with huda salon it, it's the it's the movie that it, it's doing what it needs to do and i think it does it really well and i there's nothing that jumps out of me that you know it, it, it's confusing sometimes but it i can like I, I feel like uh this movie is uh smarter than me and i'm willing to catch up and learn from it here's a good thing the Long Walk. How about one of these days it gets remade into a Hollywood film? Do you guys ever seeing this <laughs> seeing this movie being re- You know it, Bruce. You're shaking your head. Don't you know there's some kind of Hollywood big way? Well, going, the problem gonna... is there's a Stephen King book yeah. called The Long Walk. So that's the unfortunate because it probably will get made, but it'll get made as a Stephen King book. And then people won't know what this movie is. And people mm-hmm. need to know what this movie is. So champion it. <laughs> I, I should point out when we got this, I turned it on right away because I've been waiting for. Uh, I heard Frank Darabont was going to do a long, the long walk a long time ago. And I was like, oh shit, that came out. <laughs> so I put it on. I'm like, <laughs> and, and that got me even more confused. I'm like, wait, I don't know what the hell this is. So I actually had to start it over. So maybe I saw it one and three eighths times because <laughs> I had to and start it over. <laughs> do you guys, one last thing, do you guys get the feeling on this movie is really interesting in a good way? that it's a ghost story and it is sometimes really creepy. It's not scary, but it's like no. creepy. And then sometimes it's incredibly, it also is incredibly sad. I think a lot of times and oh it's, my just, gosh. it's just, it's it, just the mood it, it, of this movie is quite amazing. And the fact yeah. that it keeps that mood all the way through this, if this is not directed and written correctly, this is the silliest movie you've ever seen. And it doesn't come across as silly I, at all. I, I think, uh, oddly enough parts of it are comforting when true when, that's when, true when that sad things are happening to a character you almost feel you know it's like oh but you know the the, the main character comes in says something and it's like oh okay that and so it, it's almost like a it's almost like uh someone you know kind of you know giving you a hug and say it's okay death happens it's okay <laughs> and then other times you see death happening it's like oh my god that's so fucking tragic <laughs> Right. And but it also does those things that like a classic ghost story can do. And it's it's very, very hard to do in modern movies. And uh, I know Greg will probably agree with me on this, like the innocence. There's nothing gory in the innocence. Sometimes it's just a woman on the other side of like this marshland. And it's this very impactful, creepy moment. And there's similar moments in this where it's just like lit at night and you see the ghost woman that's always walking with him, like standing on the opposite side of the small bridge. And it's just, it's just something about it. That's amazing. There, there's also yeah. stuff in this. And we talked about this with Undine or Undine. There's uh, cultural stuff in this that I certainly don't, I, I know that it's a thing because I've heard about it, but I don't understand it. Like, uh, um, 
you know watching like uh ringu or whatever like the the ghosts are like wet apparently water is a is a cultural thing with horror there they keep showing the the little orange yes they, they, they keep showing it and maybe that means something more than what it does that that wouldn't be anything that you know i, I don't know about you guys that wouldn't be anything i would pick up on but i, no, I get it yeah. i get the feeling that there's a bunch of little details like that, that if you live in the area in which this was made, you might pick up on a lot of, uh, oh, wow, that's a really cool detail that may otherwise just go right over our heads. But there is one big detail that is cultural that I you get and is important to the movie, and that is the whole thing about how, and once again, I want to spoil things, but like how a spirit either does or doesn't pass on. And that's like a key thing in this. Yeah. And that's not right. necessarily a Western idea, but you understand it in this movie yeah. and it's key. Yeah, that was really interesting yeah. as well. well which, I, I, I was talking more like the the, the yo, I, I get that too. Superficial details, but like the little yes. tiny details that would just like, oh, it's an orange, and you don't think twice about it. But maybe if you live in that area, it's like the orange represents this. Oh, that's really yes. smart that they put it. <laughs> yes, and, I think you're right. And regarding about the passing on the spirits and whatnot, in different cultures and regarding how one processes trauma and death. There will be different reactions where people will, there might be moments of empathy. There might be moments of, I can't believe this is happening. There's going to be a divided reaction regarding the actions that take place in the long walk. And a lot of it will we're, we'll actually deal with what part of the place, where in the world you were born or, or how you were raised. And that's what makes really the long walk really fun. Or you can be like Eric, me and Bruce on a superficial level, maybe just trying to put the puzzles together. So it works on a superficial level and it works on a very philosophical, spiritual level as well. The long walk, five stars. For all of us, that is our main features.